I'm calling to order the Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting of Monday, May 18, 2015. Uh, a brief agenda this evening, beginning with a discussion on the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to um, let you know what, there's a lot of info on here that doesn't have anything to do with, but it's relevant and related for it. So, um, we're going to need to keep going. Yeah, Maybe you could well, yeah, I appreciate yeah, yeah, sure. So, I need it that far away anyway. <laughs> I'm suggesting uh, that the committee, 11 members, uh, as you see, the development board, town manager, DPW director, director of inspectional services, master plan advisory committee, and the master plan advisory committee. So, two slots for people who have been on the master plan advisory committee just for continuity. A town meeting member, a member of the finance committee, a member of the CPA committee and two at-large seats where the town manager would recommend make the recommendations for appointment by the selectmen. And it's, it's, it's about it's the, the size of the Mass Plan Advisory Committee, which is a big committee, but my suggestion is that we, I think we need to have DPW director and inspectional services in the early years of implementation and then we could revisit this and possibly work with them off or have them at, um, make a designee to the committee. Um, have you talked to the inspectional services director and the DPW director? No, no I've talked to the town manager okay. about my interest in having them serve and he, he thinks it's worthwhile. Okay. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. Um, I also should say that I, I think that it may be possible that this committee could keep its meetings down to quarterly, because a lot of what this committee is going to do will be to kind of say, tag your it, um, and set the schedule for every year, what we're going to try to accomplish a year from now, um, and which is the lead board or committee or department head And who are the support committees? And then kind of sub just kind of right, right heard, but just to make sure. And this committee would um, prepare an annual report to town meeting, and for the submission to the annual report every year, so that everyone can see what progress is being made. It, are there, in, in the board's view, is there anyone who's missing? <laughs> I, I have a question before we get to who's missing, and that is um, with where you say re redevelopment board, town manager, DPW director, and so on, um, until we get down to the at-large uh, folks, are, are those designees of the redevelopment board? Or is that the, the board has a uh, bank would be serving? A, a, yeah. My suggestion is that it would be either a liaison from among someone chosen from the board yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think in the first year, at a minimum, that's, a, that's advisable. At, after this thing is rolling, I think it could be a um, designee. But just so I'm clear, we're talking about one member one, of the, yes. the whole yes, One member right. of the Finance Committee, one member of the CPA Committee. Yes, so. I'm sorry. Okay. That, that wasn't explicit. I got it. I should have... Um, can I ask a couple more? Yeah. Um, so the town. So I guess a couple. A couple things. Uh, we don't want the board appointee, town manager, DPW director, director of inspectional services, master plan advisor, uh, town meeting member. I, I think typically the way that you would see something like that is um, a town moderator. Would appoint. Would appoint. Uh, yeah, town moderator appointee. Um, CPA uh, committee appointee and then the two at large I guess the one thing I'd say on the at large is um, is you've got here recommends for appointment by the selectmen I guess the question I have is this is our committee though right so um, maybe it's the 
I don't know. It just my seems. My thought was if the redevelop if the redevelopment board member is on the committee. Yeah. You want selectmen buy-in. Oh, I don't disagree that they should have an appointment or something like that. It's just um, I don't know. It just seems kind of strange for them to be appointing to. Maybe it's just the use of the word. Maybe it's just a turn of phrase. Um, Selectman designee is almost at like, like I wonder if it's more that yeah. or or maybe you, on 10 and 11 you might um, divide it up a little bit and have one that is uh, appointed by the town manager and approved by the selectman and then one that's actually appoint, appointed by the selectman well I think they'll always do it like this because okay. they don't okay. want to do it so maybe this is the right I guess it's right I, I guess that's fine mm -hmm. it's just it just I'm so used to a committee being a selectman's committee or uh, you know a, a town meeting committee this is really a redevelopment board committee as weird as it sounds so um, that's just the, um, that's just a strange part of it I guess I had um, a couple of other thoughts um, first Carol you have on uh, the list here master plan advisory committee twice and five and six so you don't have what that's supposed to say it, what it's supposed to mean is there'd be two True. seats that would be filled from the master plan advisory committee. Right. Okay, I got it. Um, any thought about maybe conservation commission or one of the historical commission or historic district commission? Um, I think that's possible, but then you want maybe someone from recreation and I mean there yeah, are no, after a while it gets to be a huge I, I was hoping that you could get that through item one five six and nine I, I guess redevelopment board master plan one master plan two and at well did I say yes and nine to be a committee member it's possible you could get some of that through 10 and 11 as well because sure. when the call for candidates goes out we can make clear what areas the master plan focuses on no one in arlington has missed that yet um, I, I haven't seen too many committees with a dpw director appointee or a director of inspectional services appointee um and i'm just uh, i'll be curious to see as to their reaction because I know they're very busy and you know sitting on a committee versus serving the committee you know or or providing information to the committee or something like that I think I think it's just a, a little different than one what usually one what one would usually see in that situation yes, I think you're right in I should have brought the, a copy of the plan up when I think of the implementation steps the first six of them and then sprinkled throughout there's a lot of zoning recommendations yep. in the near term and that's where director of inspectional services is also the zoning enforcement officer so part of my thinking was that he's going to be very important to that early process and if it's only quarterly i would think they're not a policy making board so i don't think there will be I guess I'd like to hear his reaction. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's I think enough. it's a little out of the norm, and I'm curious as to, you know, not that they're both great, so I'm not I'm not saying that, but it's okay. just kind of like I can I it's can an I can see it yeah. I can see it being well. Why wouldn't we just report to you? And also, I, I think there is a potential awkwardness if the zoning enforcement officer is serving on the committee and the committee just decides to, to say else. this is the project that we want to support and then it comes to the, the building inspector for approval and the inspector finds something that he can't approve right from a mm -hmm. from an enforcement of the bylaw point of view I, I I don't know I mean it just seems like it could potentially put but I think that might be one reason why you do want him at the yeah. table at the beginning of the meal. <laughs> uh, if there's a, it's, I don't really see the committee actually making zoning bylaw amendments or recodifying the zoning bylaw, but more setting it in motion that this is now um, implementation steps 
5, 7, 14, and 90 are the ones we're going to focus on this year. And that might be more a, a second or third year because, frankly, a lot of the zoning should be handled very soon because it takes so much time and you lose opportunities or you're, you're, you can get stuck with... Um, redevelopment scenarios that aren't consistent with the master plan if they come forward at a time before zoning has been right. um, updated. So where I'm headed with that is I think that the um, inspectional services, the zoning enforcement officer would then work, really roll up his sleeves and work with a group that's working on the zoning. I don't, I don't necessarily I'm just not sure he needs to be part of the committee for that. I mean, I'd be interested to see what, what they have to mm -hmm. say. I I'd be so. happy to get their input and um, report back to the board, both DPW and Director of Sexual Services. Mm -hmm. DPW Director is the, um, serves on the Disabilities Commission. Oh, he does, okay. Just offer that as a- As an example. An example where the okay. department head um, is, is a member of the mm -hmm. standing mm -hmm. committee. What else? Anything else I can work on between now and June 1? No, uh, I, I don't think so. I guess, I guess from, uh, to, to kind of pile on to what Bruce said, I mean, maybe it would be, um, I guess it would be interesting to see what the town manager might be thinking with respect to, you know, to 10 and 11, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe it's potentially the assistant town manager or something on two, um, or himself, I guess, um, and then 10 and 11. You know, do we, are I, we gonna be able to pick up I between got some 9, 10 and 11 on the historical commission or something like that, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Either that or, um, and, and you know maybe maybe on the master plan advisory committee if you could also get a two for there someone who's also on the open space committee. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Mike. Can you repeat that? I was gonna say maybe you could get a two for um, on the two master plan advisory committee mm -hmm. folks. I know of at least one person who's also on the open space committee. I almost said open source. Open source. <laughs> that's not, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly, that's, that's work. Um, so, but, for um, example, on the, yeah, yeah. on the Open Space Committee. Because I think that's another one that you just don't yep. see yeah. here, right? Or, or recreational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Good point. I mean, it, it's so difficult because it just, talk about cross-functional, right? I mean, it, go, it goes against every single thing we do in town. You know, at some point in time, it's gonna get yeah. hit by this. So, you know, you wanna make sure that that all constituencies are, are kind of um, viewed, but you can't have a committee of you know, 22, so. Yeah, just two things. Okay, let me see what I can um, do to report some uh, to you on June 1. Okay. Good. Right, moving on to the ARB designee for the Open Space Committee. Speaking of open space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the there is a, the, the board's designee to the Open Space Committee uh, has indicated that she is no longer interested in serving. Uh, I have not been given any. Uh, potential candidates to offer to you, but uh, if you want some potential candidates, we could try to find out who's out there. If the, if the Open Space Committee knows of anyone, I could also try to um, do some outreach to see who might be um, a good designate. But do you have ideas yourselves from folks you know in town? Maybe inclined? It's open Space and Recreation. So. Don't want to forget the recreation aspect is very important. Yeah, the other person I think of is already on Parks and Rec, I think, so. Cool. 
it can be among yourselves as well. Andy served for a while. Mm -hmm. We could volunteer him to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for that. <coughs> we could volunteer the as yet unnamed number. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or two. Yeah. Um, I don't have anybody who's coming to mind now off the top of my head, but you know. No, getting there would probably be a good idea. See who's out there who might be interested. Okay. Yeah, and I think too because you've got younger kids, you yeah. know, I mean, and sometimes that's a nice uh, place to be for, yeah, sure. for, for someone to yeah. take that position. Mm -hmm. I was writing, so I want to make sure I, you, your point just now was that there are a lot of people with young children who use the recreation services. Who might be very interested. I just want to be yeah. sure yeah. I heard yeah. that right when you're writing. And yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You get kind of one in the two, like, probably for me. No, I'll start approaching people at the park. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Hunting them down. Yeah. Shy away from you even more than usual. <laughs> Usually it's because of my kids. <laughs> That'll be you too. Okay. Um, I put in front of you, by the way, while we're talking about open space, um, a, it's not my best writing, but a, a draft for your consideration for the letter of support that the board authorized uh, in March. Yeah, you can wait until the end of the meeting. Oh, I think I it's. See it. It, oh, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we did. I don't think we did that. Uh, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'll okay. thank you, Pop. Pop, put it on here. So next up is a work plan update. Okay. I'm going up. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Bruce and I are pretty good chairs. <laughs> He's okay. So the first item is, um, we just took care of it, actually. Uh, it's time to get an implementation committee going for the master plan. Uh, we've already started uh, a couple implementation steps. Uh, one is preparing design standards that would eventually, ideally, be incorporated into a zoning update as zoning standards, design standards, excuse me. Uh, David Gamble uh, is working on these, and we have the walking tour in April to get input on what buildings and, and design aspects of um, our commercial centers are appealing and are um, elements that we want to incorporate into a, a, almost like a standard or a code, uh, not for cookie cutter um, sake, but to guide uh, property owners and developers in what Arlington considers to be appropriate for Arlington. So the board will hear from David Gamble at the June 1 meeting. That will be on the agenda. And um, he'll show you what he's done so far. Also, May 29th, the board, I mean, excuse me, the staff is, uh, we're having a zoning retreat. We're just taking the bylaw and you know, you live with these um, the bylaw, and you know, you know its shortcomings, or where it's outdated, um, or where we think, in our opinion, our professional opinion, it is. And then, when you go to sit down to try to think about it, you forget. So we each took a section or an aspect, and we're going to try to summarize what the issues are and what some opportunities would be, according to the master plan, for um, updating and improving. We're hopeful that, I'm hopeful that we have some amendments for our next town meeting. Whether we have the whole thing recodified, I doubt, but um, I think it, we'll have some zoning changes <laughs> at a minimum. Um, wasn't there, I thought there was some money set aside for, uh, to go through the zoning bylaw to kind of rationalize it, if you will. Right. One of the approaches you can take initially is to recodify the existing bylaw to make sure it's internally consistent. Right. Um, we could take that approach and not touch anything substantive. 
whether or not the implementation committee will recommend that or, okay. or not, or whether the board, I think the board needs to give some thought to whether we try to make some improvements to the substance of the code. Here again, I think you're trying to balance. Um, we've lived with uh, this bylaw a long time, and we will be living with its product for a long time. Uh, every year there are developments that are done according to this bylaw. So now we've come out of this two and a half year master planning process and it's kind of a sense that now we can really get to it. So you could recodify and do this exchange work all at the same time and not lose any more opportunity and be really ready. Or you can take more time on the substantive. So I think my recommendation, I think we, we should make some substantive changes and have some discussion over how much we could also do in recodifying the bylaw. I don't, I don't think we're going to throw out the whole thing and start from scratch. I mean, you could do that. But I also have talked to some other um, communities who hired um, companies who come in and put everything online in different, um, where, it, where it really lives online and it's no longer a paper document. And they've been a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we want a lot more than that out of this next change. Um, if, by the same token, if we hire someone to do substantive work, there's a learning curve that they'll need to climb. Uh, they'll have the benefit of a master plan, which will help them. But we've got some momentum and familiarity. The, the community does. The a lot of the volunteers and the board that I think you've all gotten much more familiar with our existing zoning bylaw. So I kind of want to keep that uh, while the master plan is fresh in everyone's mind. A little hesitant to have a two or three year zoning process where we don't have any zoning changes until mm -hmm. you know for mm -hmm. two or three years. I agree. I think that makes sense. I think that you know, and there are some substantive things that we probably want to address sooner than later, and just you know, putting all those things on the back burner while we focus on the procedural or or, or rational or, or you know. More recodifying it. It, it's, yeah. it does sort of take the wind out of the sails, I think. And, um, it's a little anticlimactic, too. Yeah. You know, I think it's anticlimactic, too. My only concern is is that it's so complicated right now, is that if we start doing substantive changes and we layer them on top, because we're not in a position just to whole cloth, you know, uh, change it up, I do get a little concerned, given the complexity of the bylaw as it currently stands, that you're going to start pulling a thread well, when you do something, and the next thing you know is that thread's going to keep going or, you know, in shifting on you as you're trying to do other things. That's that's my only concern, I guess, as mm -hmm. far as, um, you know, I, I guess I guess what I'd love to, under, love to know is as we go through that, I, I'd love to know that it's the inconsistencies, I guess, that concern me most. Right of, of the bylaw, one thing to the next, and you know, I don't know that you lose momentum if you lose some of those. Mm -hmm. So might be the point if you if you if you at the same time. Yeah, I, and you know, what, what, what I'm thinking we can be doing is being sort of mindful of, you know, eventually we want to come up with a recodified yeah. bylaw, and so we need to do some substantive changes to build on this momentum. For example, to have a provision that talks about mixed use, mixed use yeah. which was a big focus coming out of the master plan. Um, I'm sensitive to what you're saying, though, Mike. I mean, if you have, you know, a bylaw that is really just a patchwork series of amendments on top of the bylaw, and there's, like, there's, there, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing to attach it to. Yeah, you know, it, it's like it's like it's so flimsy underneath that, you know, when you start putting something that has real meaning mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily know what the consequences of that are going to be as it flows through to the rest. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my only concern, mm -hmm. I guess. So. Mm -hmm. um, 
this gives me direction, actually, this conversation, because I have some thoughts on how I can give you more information to help us consider how to move forward. Mm -hmm. I, I do like the idea of a kind of a hybrid, if it's possible. Uh, I'll try to find out what it would cost to recodify. And yeah. Whether, and whether the process would preclude any substantive improvements simultaneously. Yeah, and I think just as your, your comment spurred another thought, if all we did was recodify, then when we get around to the substantive changes that we want, we're beginning to fall back into what we had before, which is, you know, a, a bylaw with a collection of amendments. And I get it, over time it's going to be that way anyway, but, um, you know, it would be it's nice to have, start, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would be nice at the end of this process that we have a, a codified bylaw that reflects the substantive changes that we all want to see coming out of the master plan process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think it's, it's good to have two trains running at the same time. Yeah. I, I think that was more my point. Just yeah. make sure that you know when we're. I think we have to be a little bit careful given where this pile is right now. Yeah. That, you know we're not just the patches we put on are, are aren't used to our disadvantage somehow mm -hmm. if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. so let's see. Um, and of course, some of the other things that are being implemented aren't the obvious. The Community Preservation Act committee was an implementation step, and that mm -hmm. will happen because town meeting approved the composition of that committee um, and the building maintenance position uh, was a recommendation that was made so pretty early in the process and it already had a lot of legs so that's yeah, it was great. That was mm -hmm. timing, that's very good. So I think that's it for um, master plan Tom well, I don't know why it says uh, Tom meeting presentation. I, that's a relic from the previous iteration. It was um, mostly implementation. So the next item, um, which really should be item two, you know, two, three. I wanted to just let you know that the um, conveying the NPP fines to some stewardship fund is in process. It might have been accomplished, <laughs> but uh, I've asked that that it, it hadn't happened, so um, it is now in process. It is underway. It's great. It's just, I think it was kind of fell through the cracks. Um, so I, I apologize, but that's kind of nice. So central school leases, there is um, one here is ready to be signed, and that's with the Arlington Seniors Association. We sure. um, took care of all that. Uh, the board, um, 23 Maple Street needs some work because there's kind of a list of things they wanted to change in the lease or questions. Uh, Mr. Graver Watershed Association is ready to go. I, I should have that one for you, June. Let me make a note. Okay. So I think Twenty Maple Street will be one of June, end of June. And on Maple Street, now that uh, the budgets are approved, I'll be updating the request for proposals for the exterior work at 23 Maple Street. Uh, if you have any questions on that or don't remember no, what great. that's all about, let me know. I just don't want to mm -hmm. do a rerun of that. Okay. On Central School, um, I received alternative sketch designs on how to treat the site paving. And I will be getting some recommendations from a stone conservator on what to do about the brownstone steps on the Academy Street yeah, entryway. Yeah. Their brownstone is, um, and, and um, ice melt don't get along. And it's been many years of um, pitched battle between the two, so the brownstone is really pitted and rutted. Uh, so we, we need to know from what our most responsible step is, because that's part of the original material from the time the building was constructed. So that will then, I'll then have some specs prepared. 
I need to get some degree of comfort between the building occupants and the historical commission and uh, I, I, historic districts commission. Not all of it would be under the jurisdiction, but I think as a courtesy, it's, it's important because it is a um, historic building in a historic district. So if any of you are interested in seeing the sketches before I, I go to uh, the committees and commissions, let me know. I did um, get some input from the DPW director on them because I think it's important for us to know how, how long he thinks they're going to last based on how we maintain them and so which ones are advisable from a strictly public works perspective because we have to include that ingredient in our decision making. So central, uh, the Jefferson Cutter House, um, Heather Lavelle is the director of the Dallin Museum and she worked very hard in uh, preparing a grant application with Patrick Guthrie from the Historical Commission. The collaboration um, with them, I, I really have to give them most of the credit. Um, they really did a lot of work on this. It's for $150,000, it will help us leverage a um, 75 grant from the state if we're successful, and we'll use 75 already authorized funds from CDG and um, the capital program to match the state grant for a total of 150. Um, we haven't any update on gateways uh, at the moment. We, uh, not since before town meeting. Uh, the next few are pretty much status quo. Anything in bold is usually new on these work tracking updates. Uh, except for with regard to economic development. Uh, the department did prepare um, at the selectman's request some standards, some suggested standards to use for uh, all businesses in anywhere in Arlington for outdoor seating. The, the, the um, board has two or three or four applications before it right now, the board of selectmen. And um, so we provided that to them and that they'll um, prepare some version of standards and then um, I'm hopeful they'll issue a couple permits for Broadway Plaza um, next month. That's a pretty sooner. So we, um, we talked about committee vacancies. And well, we talked about the implementation committee, uh, the Community Preservation Act committee. I might be trying to get like a joint outreach announcement to, to try to um, send out a call for candidates or work with the town manager's office. I expect that um, Andrew Flanagan and I will be doing a lot of the staffing of the Community Preservation Act committee initially, at least. So. And the housing plan, we have submitted a grant and we're told that we have good reason to expect that it will be funded to help us update our housing plan. They're now called housing production plans. And we had a housing plan. We would update it and do it to conform to uh, today's standard. And uh, staff and I agree that we really should have an advisory group working with the uh, consultants on the housing plan. So we need that advisory group staff as well. So there's a lot of uh, demand right now for good volunteer talent. Uh, that would, we're suggesting someone from the housing, the housing authority director staff or a tenant, um, housing corporation of Arlington director staff or tenant, um, if there were other nonprofit community development corporations in Arlington producing housing, we'd probably want them as well, but Housing Corp is the only one, so we'd want them involved. Um, a private owner or tenant of an affordable unit. A parent with children in the Arlington public school system or a school employee. In other words, you're trying to get at someone who would <coughs> be looking for housing and concerned about the need for housing and affordable housing in Arlington. A real estate broker or an attorney for their professional uh, perspective. And a council on aging staff or board member. 
So do you have any suggestions on any? This is, would be an informal ad hoc committee just for the purposes, but um, if you have any thoughts on anyone we've overlooked or any type of talent we've overlooked, let me know. Is there anything that you think I've overlooked that uh, we have any ball we have in the air that I haven't reported on? Okay. Oh, good. What do you think? Am I, is everything? All right. I'm done then with the work tracking. Okay. So, next up is approval of minutes. Okay, we have April. 27th and April 13th. I thought the 13th looked good, and on the 27th, the only change I had was Mr. Care versus Ms. But in the, oh in the third paragraph, but it's okay, I have four sisters. <laughs> April 13th? Uh, that's the 27th. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. And usually I don't care. I just thought that was fun. Thank you, Gordon. It was your turn to have that. Thanks. For that. <laughs> <laughs> On the uh, minutes for the 27th, I'm listed as both being present and absent. <laughs> and, well, actually, uh, might be there the may case. have been a few meetings, but that might have actually been the case. But I was absent that meeting, so I should be <laughs> <Yeah. and> present. <laughs> Um, and on the uh, 13th, um, I'm not being cute, excuse me for interrupting, I'm yep. not being cute, but it's not that you were just late, right? No, I, I, I was not in All right, I'll strike that and add you to the absent column. Go ahead. Uh, and on the 13th, in the last paragraph, um, fourth line, well, actually beginning on the third line where Mr. Gamble said the goal of the design standard should be to identify what the fiscal aspirations of the manifestations are. And I had a problem with this because I just, I would prefer it to read something along the lines of Mr. Gamble said the goal of the design standards should be to illustrate the form and appearance of the master plan's recommendations or something to that effect. I just thought the way this was phrased yeah. was, I didn't, I, I, guess I, know I read it a couple times, but yeah, I finally got it. But yeah, I see what you're saying. I like what you said. Illustrate the form and the appearance. appearance of the master plan's recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. Other than that, I had no problem with the 13 minutes. I had no problem with that either. I'll move to approve the April 13 minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll move to approve the April 27th minutes as amended. Did you do both? No, he just did. I just did the 13th. Did you have something else on the 27th? Uh, no, but I'm abstaining. Oh, right. So, yeah. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Second. Uh, yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. And we had a, a request late last week from a resident of the town to go back to minutes from November 3rd of last year um, during a zoning application. He was concerned that some of his questions didn't make it into the minutes. Um, I told him that we'd bring it up at the meeting tonight, but my feeling, not to drive the agenda here, but my feeling on minutes that old is that there's no good way to go back and reopen those. Um, I did look to see whether video of the meeting was available. I saw that. And it's not. It's the first time in how long. <clears throat> I think there are only two meetings that, that that's happened. Um, uh, minutes should really be a picture of the meeting. I don't think they need to be a verbatim rendering of every conversation that happened. I think the general sense of what occurred at that meeting is reflected in those minutes. Um, I'm, not concerned, I'm, I'm not suggesting in any way that we go back six months and reopen anything from, from that far back. I don't think it's fresh in our memory that I think we might be doing more harm than good to, to take that on. Well, I agree with what you're saying, Andrew. I, I, uh, 
I've always felt the minutes are supposed to be an overview of what happened, mm -hmm. but uh, not a transcript. No. Um, and uh, if it were if they were designed to encapsulate everything that happened and everything that was said, uh, the minutes would uh, stretch out to be you know just pages, it, yeah, pages yeah. and pages. Um, and I think we're fortunate that we have Carol taking excellent notes and Amy transcribing those into a very good record, um, but they don't need to be an exact replica. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's, it's <clears throat> if that were the case, we'd have a stenographer here. Yeah. 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 I agree. Okay. All right. So that closes that item. Um, Public Carroll did distribute a public body checklist for creating and approving meeting minutes. Um, we'll add that to tonight's minutes, I suppose, as a documents used item for future reference as to what the purpose of meeting minutes is supposed to, to be, if that purpose is to serve. And I think I'd point out that I think Carol and, and Amy and transcribing what it is that you take notes on and then uh, uh, I think in approving the minutes that we do follow these. Mm -hmm. I feel good about that. So. Good. Carol, thank you for providing this. You're welcome. Anything else? I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.